Welcome to the Halloween edition of the Lion Lowdown. Yes, I am Sharon Burns, the Director of Communications and Marketing, and today also a ninja. And I'm here with Superintendent Dan Westville, who I think is a fish breeder, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> a scary, a scary superintendent. So yeah, okay. uh, that, that can be, yeah, that's as good as it gets for me. So uh, <laughs> this month in the Lion Lowdown, we'll be discussing these following events. Uh, touch a truck event, our OVT visit, a uh, strategic planning update, um, some job openings, and by the way, it's getting colder, a little winter weather out there. So Yes. So we are going to start uh, this episode with a shout out. We're actually going to weave our shout outs in through our episode like we've done sometimes in the past. Sometimes we save them to the end. Today they're going to be woven through. Um, and we're going to start with a shout out to our <coughs> early childhood staff and our parents as teacher staff who put on a fantastic event Amazing. on October 20th called the Touch of Truck. So we wanna give a special shout out to Cindy Willis, Paige Bell, and Pay, um, sorry, Kelly Falk for their work on that. Uh, we would also like to thank, uh, you don't have a Touch of Truck event without really big equipment, um, and, and also some students there to help. The Lansing High School Ks who did some face painting, the Lansing Police Department, Lansing Firefighters, uh, Fire District One in Leavenworth County, Leavenworth Army Recruiting Unit, um, our bus drivers, we had some of our buses there, Geiger Ready Mix, Lina Weaver Construction, Thomas Turf and Landscape, Dale Varan, Roger Schultz, and Costco. And as Sharon said earlier, uh, a special thanks to Cindy Willis, Paige Bell, and Kelly Falk for the amount of work um, that it takes in order to have that of event here. Yeah. So. This was the second year I've gotten to go and it's a really cool event because it brings the community in. It's a really nice family engagement event. Uh, they brought in some trucks and some vehicles and the kids got to get in them, honk the horns. It was a lot of fun for the kids and the adults. So yes, great job on that. Next we would like to talk about our accreditation process and our OVT visit that occurred on October 19th. Um, for those unaware, OVT stands for our Outside Visitation Team, and they're a, a group of three uh, professionals. Uh, one from uh, works for an MTSS uh, group, National MTSS group. Uh, one works down at Turner, and then the other one works for a Kansas MTSS group. And, and they're like our accountability guides that help through our five-year accreditation process. This year, we're in year five of our accreditation process, and we will be sending our information to the ARC, which is the Accreditation Review Committee. Um, we have all sorts of, of things in education that we shorten. What are, what are those called? Acronyms. Acronyms, thank you. I, my brain quit right in the middle of that. So, and, and at the end of this, we'll be accredited as a system. Uh, we've been working on rewriting all of our curriculum documents and then also a professional development goal across the district. So. Yeah, so we want to give a shout out now to a group of people who worked really, really hard to get this first visit ready for, on, for October 19th. Um, we want to shout out, I'm going to read them off, Caroline Reynolds, Jenny Nicholson, Chris Hoverson, Jake Hansen, Jennifer Cole, Brooks Jenkins, Alan Penrose, and Ascender Donald did a lot of work to make this a successful visit. So, so that group took our information from our district leadership team and, and they condensed it into the exact questions that the OVT was asking. And then Miles, who stayed up all night that evening, making sure that that was all ready for that meeting. So uh, also a big shout out to him for organizing all of that as our director of teaching and learning. So. Yes, yeah. So each update um, or each episode, we are gonna give an update if there is one on our strategic planning process. This time our update is small, but it is one. Um, I did get all of the information about our September meeting onto the website. So all of the information that we gathered there from each of our facilitators, um, they are all now on the website. So you can find that if you're on the www.usd469.net website. You go up to the upper left-hand corner, there's a menu drop down. It's the very first selection, 2022-2023 uh, strategic planning process. So click on that and you can see all of the information from our first meeting. And our facilitators met um, with Greenbush uh, earlier this month to go over what we had garnered from our community. And then we, we start to lay out the big ideas based off of all of that input from our community members, our, our parents, our students who did an excellent job once again. Um, with that teachers and staff. So th that, that is what we will then go over at our January 4th meeting um, with, 
when we reconvene at the strategic planning committee. Those will be those action steps. Yes, action so, steps. Yes, yes. Very so good. The more specific stuff. Um, so we'll be reaching out to the strategic planning committee um, later in November, early December. Yep. I'll be sending them an email to let them know what that January 4th meeting will look like. And then after that meeting, we will be posting again so that the rest of the community is aware of what um, they've done. So thank you so much to that group of people. They, they are fantastic. Um, Another topic that we discussed last month that we're going to carry over to this month is recruitment. We still have some job opportunities in Lansing. Um, we both can speak to what a wonderful, great, wonderful place it is to Definitely. work. Um, a specific need we have right now, same as last month, is a para educators. And I talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again. I started out as a para, and it is a fantastic job, especially for parents whose children are just now getting back into the school system and you want to get back into the workforce. It was wonderful for me because I could follow my son's schedule. Um, so I highly recommend it if you're at all interested to check out our employment opportunities and especially those paraeducator positions. Another need that we have, especially second semester, or is a need for substitutes. And you can say, oh, I don't have time to substitute. If you have an afternoon, one day a week that you could come and fill in as a PM sub, um, we need everybody that we can get uh, in order to do that. It's also a good way to, to keep a finger on the pulse of, of what's going on in our community. Um, the substitute teaching piece, it can be extremely rewarding. It gets you back in, in touch with, with kids and, and kind of that enthusiasm. It's, if, if, if I'm ever feeling down, I walk to the elementary school and, and those littles are, are kids that they raise your spirits each and every day. Um, the other thing about the paraprofessionals, the change that we've made recently is if you have a part, if you are looking for part-time work, we can we can work with your schedule inside of that. Also, we also have some bonuses available. If you have um, sign-on bonuses for those positions, uh, if we have staff members that that recommend you know someone for those positions, we give a, a retention bonus, and then we also have bonuses for our substitutes for hours and days worked um, in in a quarter. So it's not just the daily rate; it's also you know some opportunities there. So. Yeah, and as a reminder, you can find those job openings on the website, www.usd469.net. If you go up to the quick links, drop it down, there is a spot for employment opportunities. Click on that, it'll tell you all of the openings and how to apply. So with that being said, we're getting near the end of this episode. We wanna remind parents with the winter weather coming that um, you need to send your kids in with coats and boots and gloves and all of that great stuff. It, it definitely isn't the case that we're taping this on Halloween. We don't just dress like this. But we've had snow on Halloween, mm -hmm. um, and, and we're getting ready, hopefully, to not have any snow days. But if we do, you need to download the app and, and make sure that you have um, the app. That's the way that we notify folks of making sure if we aren't going to have school, mm -hmm. if we're going to you know, make sure if we have a bus issue ever, that's how we notify everyone. Mm -hmm. So make sure that you go and get the app. And, and then the other thing, and I forgot to mention this, um, we have families in need, and if you happen to be a family in need, um, it, for coats, gloves, mittens, all of that type of stuff, um, contact your, your office of your school. Uh, the main thing there is that we have some resources that we work really hard to take care of our community and reach out to those counselors or social workers in each of our buildings. Um, because we do have some resources there. Um, if you're cold, it, it's no fun in the morning, so I know that. So. Well, we're almost done. I want to remind people that we do have a podcast, um, our Director of Teaching and Learning, myself, called The Lion Pridecast. We are going to be interviewing our new assistant principal, Becky Jones, later this week. So please, if you haven't listened to that, please do. It's on the homepage of the website. Again, I'm going to say it again, www.usd469.net. We need to flash that on the bottom I of the will. screen. She, I will. You're, yeah, I'll be on there. yeah. Look at that. Um, that's why she's the director of communications and marketing. Yeah. So, and this concludes our October edition of the 2022-2023 Lion Lowdown. Yes. Happy Halloween, and we will see you again in November. Thank you. Thank you.